what we're going to talk about today are basically, I, since we didn't, uh, I didn't have any idea about what everybody's skill levels were, how much of you excel, I thought it best to start with the very basics. Um, we're going to talk about that for about uh, 20 to 25 minutes, and then we're going to take questions and answers, and specifically at the end, we're going to take some time to find out if there's something specific that you want to cover in the next couple of sessions, uh, because we can customize a little bit between now and the next session to talk about items that are of special interest to you. Uh, right now, we're going to go over the basics about how you navigate through Excel, uh, some keyboard shortcuts. Um, I know many people are tied to their mouse, but if you're typing on the keyboard, uh, it's much easier, much more efficient to be able to do a keyboard shortcut rather than have to take your hand off of the keyboard, go to the mouse, and um, do the mouse uh, work. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about formula tips, uh, some of the basics of formulas, and creating repeating items, um, and we'll just get into it from there. So, first we're going to talk about shortcuts. Um, in shortcuts, uh, these are keystrokes, and I'm going to say right up front here, if you're using a Mac, you probably don't have a control key. Uh, you have what they call a command key, and most of these shortcuts will work with the command key. Uh, however, you're probably going to have to you're probably going to have to look at your own uh, Mac version to find out exactly what the shortcuts are. Uh, most of these should work, however. Um, using both the shortcut keys and your mouse will be, make your work both faster and more efficient. Um, you should already know that if you press the Enter key, Excel moves down one cell. You can change that. It's in the options. Um, you can change it so that it moves to the right or it moves down. So, But the default is to move down. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to move up, down, left, or right, one cell at a time. Uh, but what if you want to go to the last row of a column? Well, if you just hit the end key in the down arrow here, you'll go to the very last row in a column. Now, that's assuming that there's no blanks. If there are blanks, it will stop at just before the last blank. Um, likewise, going to the last column in a row, you hit the end key and then the right arrow, and it will go to the last column in that row that has data in it. And if there are blanks in between, it'll stop there. Um, if you want to go to the beginning of a spreadsheet, that's uh, cell A1, control home, get you there easily. Uh, if you want to select the entire data that's in the data sheet, not the whole sheet, the data, you would hit control shift end. If you want to select the entire sheet, everything, all the blanks and everything, that's control A. If you want to copy what's highlighted, control C. If you want to cut what's highlighted, control X. If you want to paste what you've either cut or copied, it's control V. To find something, control F. To find and replace, control H. To print, control P. To save the workbook, control S. To open another workbook, control O. If you've got multiple pages in your workbook or tabs or sheets, uh, you can go up and down those using control and page down or page up. Now I'm gonna move over at this point. So here, if I'm here and I hit end and right arrow, it's gonna go to the end of the column. And the reason it didn't stop here is because that's the very end and there's a blank after that. So it goes to the last of that. If I want to go to the bottom of a column, I can hit end and down, and that goes to the bottom. And if I want to go back home, control home, that's A1. If I want to hit control shift end, that highlights all the data, and you'll see, note, notice that I've very cleverly put the word end down here to show that's the end of my data. These control A, control C, control X, for any of you history geeks, these commands have been around since way before Excel. 
They all came from the fir very first word processor called WordStar that was created in 1979 when PCs were just barely beginning. Um, so control C for copy, control X for cut, control V for paste. Those are all, uh, you'll find those in every office um, application, Word, PowerPoint, uh, you name it, everything. So if I hit control C here, notice I get the little dancing ants. That's Excel's way of telling you that you have copied the area that you you're in. And so now if I go over here and hit control V, it places a, a copy of what I just copied into that. And notice the dancing ants are still there. If I hit escape, then they go, it goes away. Or if I were to hit enter in this cell, they would go away. Control X does the same thing, only it cuts it. It takes it away from where you are and pastes it where you want to go. Um, if I hit Control G, it says go to. So here I can type either a cell reference or there's some interesting things I can do. I can get blanks. I can get objects if I had uh, drawings on this, uh, shapes or pictures. I could go to those pictures. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, things that you can do too with Control G. Control F, of course, brings up the find window, find a word like they. When it says find next, it goes to right where the first find of they is. And if I hit replace and I type in them, it will replace they with them. Well, that's not a very good idea, is it? So let's replace them with they. Helps if you don't hit the caps key. Now I notice it replaced everything, including the them that I didn't want to replace. So you got to be careful what you uh, replace here. And notice it replaced it with a capital because that's exactly what I put in there. So whatever you find and replace, it's going to replace exactly what you tell it to replace with. Now, there's a whole bunch of other shortcuts and we're going to provide you with a, a handy dandy little tips and tricks sheet at the end of this that I received many years ago from uh, a place that I have a lot of confidence in there. A consulting group down in Australia and um, there it's free for me to distribute I'm not charging you anything for it uh, you can pass it on to your friends as long as you don't charge it or modify it and that's right there in the front of it so you'll see there's there's like two pages of these uh, control shortcuts let's talk a little bit about entering dates it's something a lot of us do um, there's several ways to enter the date I can enter this equals today, and that gives me today's date. However, that's something that we call volatile. That means tomorrow, if I open this spreadsheet up, that will show tomorrow's date because tomorrow will be today, tomorrow. Hope that's not too confusing. Okay, you can also enter a date directly, like eight, seven, 2020. Okay, that's a lot of keystrokes, but you can do it. So this is how Excel stores it. However, this is what Excel actually has underneath the everything is a number, and that number is the number of days since January 1st of 1900. So each day from January 1st, 1900 until today has a serial number. And that's what this is called a date serial number. So a way to put the date in where it doesn't change from day to day would be to hit control and the semicolon key. Now this puts 12 to 2020 and if you look up in the formula bar, that's exactly what's in there. But if I look in the formula bar here, it's a formula equals today. So tomorrow, if I open up this file, it'll still say 12 to 2020. So it all depends. What do you want the date to be? Do you want it to be volatile? Do you want it to change every day? Or do you want it to be 
stable, non-volatile. So there's another volatile thing here. This is equals now. And that gives you not only the, the date, but the time. So date and time. And this is exactly how Excel stores it. Excel stores the date and time as the serial number 44167, which is how many days it's been from 1-1 of 1900 till today. And notice there's a decimal portion after it. That decimal portion is the percentage, if you will, of 24 hours. So 0.42633 times 24 equals 1013 in the morning. Now, you could enter a date that looks like this, and it looks kind of like a date, but it isn't. To Excel, this is 8052020. It is not a date. Um, you can also enter a time you, like this, 5 a.m., but that isn't really a time. So a time has to be either entered in 24-hour format, 16 colon 00 for 4 o'clock, or you have to type four space PM or AM. Then Excel will look at that as a time. And this is how both of those are stored. Notice they're not connected to a date, so they're only what proportion of 24 are those hours. So both of these are 0 0.67 times 24 hours past midnight. So. One of the problems I ran into early on in using Excel and taking downloads from other computers like mainframes is sometimes mainframes do store dates just like you're looking at here, or they'll say 08052020. So now I had to get some idea of how I'm going to fix that. Well, here's one approach Excel has a built-in function called date value. And date value will take a text that looks like 08 slash 25 or 05 slash 2020 and turn it into a date. So now what I did, and here's some several formulas, we're going to get into formula later. I said, okay, well, what's the month? Well, it's the first digit to the left. So I take left of that of K1 here, and the first digit is eight. And so I take the left of K1 and the first one, or one character, and I'm concatenating now, I'm putting together a string, and the slash, and then I'm going to take the middle value of K1, starting with the second character, that's the two, and I want to go two characters, which will give me 05. And then the very last thing I want to do is add another slash and the right four characters of this, which is 2020. Now Excel can evaluate that as a date. And that's exactly what it did. Uh, we're going to go on to the next item here. I'm going to flip back. Um, We've talked about dates and times. Uh, we're not going to go over this again because I held it in the spreadsheet. But we are going to talk about entering repeating data or copying data down. So going back to our spreadsheet, I really want to apply this formula to everything in this row. Well, if I hover over this cell until it turns to this dark cross and double click, it fills that formula down to the bottom of the last cell in the in the previous column. So now I've converted all these non dates to dates. OK, so let's can, talk can about you, John, yes. can you show that one one more time? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to I'm just going to delete these. I click this cell. Notice I have a white cross until I get right to the edge, the bottom right edge of the cell, it turns to a dark cross. And then if I double click my mouse, it copies that formula down. Wow. 
<laughs> Thank you, John. Much, much faster. <laughs> yes. Much faster than highlighting and say copy and then, you know. Oh my so, gosh, that's, that's so cool. So, I appreciate it. <laughs> so now, let's say we wanted to fill down a series. We want to have January through December. Excel understands if I highlight these two and I start with the same thing, I wait, get my cross to turn dark and pull down, it realizes that I'm wanting to give months. Likewise, if I do one, two, and I highlight both of these, wait for my cross to turn dark and fill down, it understands I want to increment every cell by one. If I did this, I should be able to, mm, let's see. Yeah, it increments every cell by two. So much easier than having to type all those numbers. So let's talk about entering formulas. So when we enter a formula, Formula either begins, and I'm going to go back to PowerPoint for right now. And I hope everybody's glad I didn't have 100 PowerPoint slides. I hate those presentations. Um, <clears throat> all formulas begin with equals or a plus sign. You can write a simple formula using normal mathematical operators like equals 5 plus 3. And when you press enter, you're going to get 8 in the cell. or uh, 8 slash 2 for divided by 2 equals 8 slash 2, you're going to get 4, just like you would on a calculator. Um, there's another character which we just talked about for stringing characters together in a string, and that's the ampersand. We showed in, in that formula that I showed about how to convert a non-date to a date. You saw that. Excel also has built-in functions like sum, average, count, mod, standard deviation. Uh, as a matter of fact, Excel has 347 built-in functions. And we're going to look at these here in just a minute, not all 347 of them. So we're going to go back here to our basic lessons. So now I can say, equals B30 plus A30. OK, what does that mean? That means I want to add this number and this number. And how Excel interprets this is add cell one column to the right to the cell two columns to the right. And because it does, that's the way Excel understands it, I can now copy that formula down. Notice I copied it all these down because there's data here as well. I'm just going to delete those. And it gave the right answer for each row. And the reason it did that is because Excel understands that I wanted to just add numbers. Now let's say I wanted to divide. Let, let me go down here and let's get a sum. Quick way to get a sum here, now you're using your mouse. See this sigma up here? And the dancing ants show you what exactly you're getting a sum of. So there's my sum. Now let's say I wanted to divide each the sum of this by, I'm going to divide that by this but I want each one of them to be divided by that sum. On your top of your keyboard on the F keys, there's an F4 key. If I press that once, it says dollar sign A, dollar sign 42. That means each one of these sums is going to be divided by that specific cell and no John, other. So when I copy it down, yes? I think you might have stopped <clears throat> sharing your screen. Ooh. It just went down to the bottom. Tar. Oh, OK, my fault. Sorry. OK, I did the same yeah. thing. I'm like, where did you go? <laughs> my apologies. So you are sharing your screen. 
Uh, for some reason, you so came up. So everybody just click down on the spreadsheet. No, no. All right. So I'm going to go over that again. I hit. OK, let's uh, we'll just start from the beginning again. So here. And I'm just going to just so we don't do this thing again, we're going to move all this stuff down. I hit control X. Now I'm hitting control V and I just moved that stuff down. There's a couple of ways you can do that, uh, but right now we'll, we'll just use our shortcuts. So what I did here, we said that Excel interprets this as add one cell to the left to the cell, two cells to the two columns to the left. And when I copied that down, it did that. It got the right sum for each row. It added 20 to 29 and got 49. But now I calculated a sum here. And how I calculated that sum is rather than writing a formula, I went up here quickly and said at this large capital sigma, and the dancing ants show me exactly what I'm getting the sum of, and I can change that. I can move it up and down, but right now that's what I want. And I press enter and I get the sum. And now I want to divide every one of these row sums by this total. So I go down and click A42 only. <clears throat> if I were to continue this, pull this down, let's just try that right now. If I were to pull this down, I get divide by zero because this one says it's dividing by A43 because it moved down one row each time. So what I really want to do is divide everything by this sum. So now when I type in A42, I can either type in dollar sign A, dollar sign 42, or I can hit A42 and then the F4 key, and the dollar signs indicate that that is a fixed position. It's not going to it's not going to change with each row of the formula. It's always going to divide by A42. So now, now if I copy this formula That's down, That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Now, if I copy this copy this formula down, I get every sum divided by the sum of column A. So here's some data, and this uses another formula. I want to generate some random numbers, and I want to generate them between 20 and 40. So I have a formula here that says equals RAM between, and if I don't know how to use the formula, I can always click this little F of X uh, icon right here by the formula bar, and it says bottom and top. So that means the first value I enter is the lowest number I want, and the last number I enter is the highest number I want. So now, hey, yes. John, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. There's a few people still having questions on not being able to see your screen, so I just want to let everyone know real quick. It shows John's face as the main screen, right? But here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see everyone's name. Well, one of the options there at the bottom, like the eight panels you see, should be John's screen. So if you click on that, it will display that as the um, as the big screen that you're seeing. And John, if you don't mind, maybe try and <clears throat> unshare you your, turn your camera. Off. Why don't you just turn your camera off, John? But that, oh, that, okay. That may help too. Uh, yeah. It sounds like we're getting a few different questions. So I just I want to make sure everyone can see your screen. All right. And then just reshare your screen, and that should should take care of it. Are we uh, are we seeing there? So, how much more do you think I should go back over? Um, well, just uh, maybe the last the last section you were you okay were, we're talking about entering formulas perfect yeah okay and we said that when excel looks at a formula that you enter like equals b30 plus a30 
what it really is saying is add the cell one column to the right of this cell to the column to the cell two columns to the right. So that's called relative referencing. So when I copy that down, rather than the next row saying B30 plus A30, it says B31 plus A31. So now I want to divide those by this sum here and this sum here. Remember, we got that by clicking the large sigma button up here and pressing enter. That gave me the sum. And getting that, now I want each one of these sums, every row in this sum, divided by the total. And so the way that I do that is this says A42. I can point to the cell I want and then hit the F4 key and that turns it into an absolute reference. Now each cell is divided. Each sum of these two columns is now divided by the sum of column one. Now I came up here to show you, I did a fill down here. This is January through June of some years. Don't know, it, January through June, January of one year through June of the following year. And I wanted some data. So that data, in order to get that, I'm just making stuff up here at this point. Well, one way to do that is to generate random numbers. And Excel has two different ways to generate random numbers. The easiest one for most people to understand is to give is the rand between function. And if I click this f of x up, this tells me that I'm going to generate random numbers between the bottom, which is 20, and the top number is 40. And I click OK. And now if I copy that down, notice all those numbers changed. This is, remember when we talked about dates and we talked about them being volatile? Well, random is volatile. Every time you update the spreadsheet, these numbers will change. So let's say I've generated a set of random numbers and I want to keep those numbers rather than keep having them update every time. I can just control C what's highlighted. Notice my dancing ants. That tells me what I've highlighted is, is what's being selected. And I can paste that as values. Now there's no longer a formula here. This is now just 22. And this is just 21. So there's, you can use that name. If I named this range, which I did, and how do you know I named this range? Look up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen, and you see that says data. Well, it didn't always say data. So I take that out. and highlight the, well, it still says data. The only way to take it out is with the name manager. So I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so now I'm gonna highlight this entire number and it just says A5 up there right now, but if I just type D-A-T-A, -A, that entire range has a name and it's called data and I can use that in formulas. So here I have what's the sum of data? Well, it's 546. Let's check that. Let's go to auto sum. 546. Hmm. The average of data, the count, how many are there, and the max. And if the count includes count, this one right here. If you use the word count, it will only count numbers. So if there's text in there, it will ignore that. However, if you want to add text to this, let's just say 36. Don't ask me why you would do that. 
Notice now the count is 17, but count A is still 18. Because count A counts everything. Every non-blank cell is counted. So if you only want to count numbers, use count. If you want to count text and anything else, you use count A. So let's say I want to enter a formula. Remember I said there was 347 different built-in functions? If I click the FX file, or a little button up here, these formulas are, are in all these different categories. Financial, if you guys are in accounting, there's going to be some financial things in there like uh, coupon days and accrued interest and all these things that it will calculate for you. Uh, depreciation, future value, a future value schedule, payments, uh, internal rate of return. Uh, all you uh, accounting geeks, you know what those mean. Uh, date and time equals date, date value, days, day, days, days 360. All these have different functions. And if I click on one of them, we used EO month before in that first spread. So if I click that and click EO, EO month and click OK, it says, what's the start date? Well, if I put a start date of today, 12, to 2020 and I put zero months in, it's going to tell me that the end of the month is 31. It knows that it's December and it knows December has 31 days. So the end of December is day 31. We have functions for math and trig, absolute, your trigonometric functions, um, log functions, power functions, product, round, up and down. We have statistical functions for statistical geeks like me. Average, standard deviation, uh, chi-squared test, uh, correlation, count blanks, count ifs, covariance, all kinds of stuff, and I won't bore you with that, although that's my thing. Look up and reference. Um, these are all things that you could do with either pivot tables or tables or named ranges. Uh, database functions. Text functions. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Let's say you want to know the character for, or you want to know what character number 142 is. Or 142, ah, John. Character 142 is the Z with an accent over the top of it. Likewise, if I want to know what function character code is for this, it's going to give me 142. So if I wanted to enter this from the keyboard, there's also an alternate alt 0142 enters the same thing. More functions, uh, logical functions, if, if error. Uh, this one we'll talk about more when we get into more uh, detail on entering for formulas. If your formula is returning an, a star or pound NA, or division by zero, and you don't want to see that, you can wrap your formula in this word, if error, put your formula there, and then put what you want to show if the formula is in error, like either a blank, or does not compute, or zero, or whatever you want to put there. We'll demonstrate that later on. Information. Uh, to tell you how many, how many, if a cell is blank, if a cell has an error, um, if a cell has text, and 
Finally, there are user defined functions. And this is an advanced topic and we'll not talk about that today. But besides the 347 functions that Excel has built in, you can actually create functions using the macro language VBA. That's Visual Basic for Applications. Um, and it's not as scary as it sounds. Okay, I think we've gone on about, droned on about 30 minutes now and it's time to stop and take questions, comments. Uh, so I'm gonna stop for right now and turn my, I'll just leave this up. All right, John, that was, I mean, I I myself have so many bits of nuggets that I can now use. So I really, really appreciate that. I really hope that other people that have been watching and paying attention also have gotten some value. I'm sure they have. Uh, like this is silly, but knowing clicking end in the <laughs> in the arrow direction you want to go, I didn't realize that went to the end of the row or column. So just that alone, I'm like, all right, cool, worth it. The other thing I got to say is, John, you're really good at this. But in case this doesn't work out, you could probably do like book narration or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like your voice is so like calming. I'm like, I want him as my like alarm clock or something. I don't know. So and, I got to. And I've he got... doesn't get frazzled either. His voice is really like, it doesn't like get. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Even keel. I'm like, gosh, I need a I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately, and I'm like, I wonder if John will uh, read a book and record it and I'll just uh, pay him for it. <laughs> well, I uh to, I have a confession to make. I was a before I started into business, I was a vocal music major. Oh, so okay. I was it's making a, sense now. Uh, okay. That makes so sense. I God has blessed me with these resonant nasal cavities and <laughs> Well, that okay. It all makes sense now. Yeah, I was, I was like, keep stays. It keeps me engaged in the presentation. So good job, John. Um, so as John mentioned, at this point, we're going to take it to questions. Um, there were a couple questions that came in beforehand, um, and so we're going to pass it over to anyone that's watching. If you have any questions on some of the things that John went over, uh, please feel free to either unmute yourself and just say them, or you can do it in the chat. And then when we call on you, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, and in addition to that, as John mentioned, um, the part two and three, the schedule for them is already up on uh, all three of our websites. But if there's anything else that you would like to learn about, you can mention it and John will add it in to the part two and part three. All right, looks like we got a couple questions coming in. Um, is there a shortcut to naming sheets? Um, let's let me go back to showing my uh, screen again and I'm going to go back here. So I wanted to the, the only shortcut that I'm aware of at this point is right clicking on this and rename. Um, there, there may be, and you definitely, you could write a user function to make a shortcut to do that. But right now, or you can simply double click in the in the sheet name down here and start typing over and saying, this is how you do it. So. And uh, so, Annette mentioned, asked about, is there a document with a lot of the functions? John provided an awesome uh, PDF document. It's like a cheat sheet for Excel that uh, Mike, Shane, and myself are going to be sending to those that are attending um, that we invited. So we'll be sending that out um, either today or tomorrow as well. So that has a lot of really good information. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on the programmer's secret. Google is your best friend. If you type into Google, how do I calculate a sum in Excel? You're going to find a whole bunch of lists in there and somebody's going to be able to explain it to you really well. Yep. And that's why I think this is so important too, because this gives a framework of what can be done really well. Like, like the dates and how do you keep the number 
the way it is? Or how do you keep like in a formula, the one uh, block stay the same rather than go down the list like all the others? Like, so it gives people a framework of, okay, these can be done so they can refer back to Google, right? Or they can refer back to how was that done? Because now they know that it can be done. So this, so I really appreciate that, John. Let's see, any other questions for John while we have him here? Ooh. Is there a function similar to EO month that captures a fixed date in the middle of the month? Uh, yes, there's not a function, but you can use EO month to get to that. Uh, when we start talking about writing more complex formulas, um, you can actually write a formula and let's say you wanted to get the 15th. Uh, I don't want to do it in front of you here because I'd have to take a few minutes to figure out how I'd write the formula, but um, uh, we can definitely have something ready for you for next week to show how we would do that. So if you wanted to capture like the, the third Thursday in every month and you wanted to know what those dates were, uh, there, are, you can write a formula to do that. Yeah, and uh, well, I'm going to leave it open a few more minutes for additional questions. But for everyone that's on right now, which it looks like there's still quite a few people on, um, we are oh. going to be having part two next Wednesday, and then part three the Wednesday after that. So we're just doing them week after week. And so I just want to make sure that I invite y'all to those as well. Um, the link should be in the email confirmation you got for this one. But of course, we'll be sending it out again um, the day of. OK, I see somebody said during the next session, can you show how to compare two sheets and identify new additions? Uh, yeah, we can do that. That's that's pretty easy. I'll have an example um, and we can go over that. That that won't take but a few minutes to create. Uh, difference between Google Sheets and Excel. Uh, Excel or Google Sheets can read Excel files. Uh, they can, they translate the formulas into their formulas and everything. Um, the formula writing is not exactly the same. The shortcuts are not the same in Google Sheets. However, the Google Sheets has the uh, has the nice ability to share with the world. Uh, anybody can download from if you allow it can download your Google Sheet file to their computer and uh, they can open it up in Excel. Um, is there a way to create a placard like this on a spreadsheet? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And simply change the dates. Let's see what see more. Ship update. Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. We'll like uh, I'm going to hold that one. I'm going to copy that one out. Um, Oh my, okay, yeah. I'm gonna copy that one out into my file here and control V, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can, I'll uh, be able to figure that one out. And let's see, can you, and simply change the dates, can you save one sheet from a spreadsheet as a separate workbook? Absolutely. Uh, let's show you how to do that. That's easy. So let's say I wanted to share to save this. I can just click right click on the tab at the bottom and say move or copy. John, I don't think you're sharing your screen. I don't know oh, if you I'm not sharing my screen. To. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Now can everybody see it? So now I'm going to right click this and I'm going to move or copy and click the button that says create a copy. And it gives you the option to save this sheet as a new worksheet, new workbook. So when you save that, now I click OK. Now I have book two and it has getting around times and dates. I can now save this whatever name I want to save it as. Awesome. Okay. Can I, how do I get back to see, can I still share and see the comments at the same time? Yeah, so on, on the Teams tab there, um, it looks like you stopped sharing your screen, but there, yeah. the good the good thing now is Teams has made it a pop-out window, so, um, so you can, there, oh, you'll still okay. be able to see the, um, 
comment section. You should be okay. able to. Let's see. Uh, to do. I'm unsure if I benefit from this class, but I'd like a refresher on VLOOKUPs. VLOOKUPs are next week. We're going to talk about uh, looking up uh, VLOOKUPs, HLOOKUPs, uh, index and match lookups. There's a, a lot of stuff. It says see more. Okay. Well, that's not uh, that's not too much to add to next week, really. Yeah, it looks like it's right on par with what you're going to go over. So. So I'm really excited. I already learned a lot out of this one. And, um, you know, I actually took quantitative analysis in graduate school at USF and I'm still learning something. Right. So I'm assuming that a lot of other people are getting a lot out of this, too. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting even, you know, going even deeper. So I think at this point we're probably going to um, conclude here. John or uh, Mike and Shane, did you want to add anything before we kind of wrap this up? I just like to well, thank, I think thank it's, you for the go ahead, Mike. Yeah, thank you for the tips. I just I learned more in 35 minutes than I learned in like a week playing with Excel myself. I, I think it's important to keep uh, up to date because Microsoft is constantly changing things. So things yeah, will be good every year. Next you know, next week. Out, so. Yeah, next week when we talk about lookups. Uh, I will probably be sharing from a different computer where I can load uh, Microsoft Office uh, 365 because there are some lookups that are available in 365 that are not available in the standalone version of Excel. So uh, we'll talk about some of those next week. Sounds good. Well, thanks again, everybody, for showing up. It looked like we really had a lot of people attending and very little drop off, so we really kept people engaged throughout this whole thing. Good. So we really appreciate your time today, and I hope we provided some value here. I know John did a, a great job, so we'll see you all next week. Y'all have a great day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye-bye. No Bye. Thank you. Thanks, John. See you. Bye.